Hi, bonjour, and um, salam alaikum. Welcome to webinar. Thanks for coming today. My name is Duke. I am marketing manager at Hager Group. I have been working several years in electrical industry, and today I'm so excited to be here with you and to talk about R4 detection devices and technology with my colleague, Nicolas Bridge. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nicolas and uh, I've also uh, been working at Tiger uh, for several years in R&D. Uh, my area is modular protection, product engineering. Uh, I've been working on MCBs, RCDs and uh, since a few years uh, as an arc fault detection expert. Uh, like Duke, uh, I'm located in France. Uh, this is the country uh, where we develop and manufacture IFDDs. Uh, and I'm very glad to share with you today about IDD technology, how it works, and how you can use it in your electrical installations. Thank you, uh, Nicolas, for your uh, very interesting introduction. You're welcome. <laughs> um, just before we get started, I just want to remind you that um, this webinar is set to listen only mode. The audience can listen to the presentation but you cannot ask questions or talk. Um, so uh, if you have questions, do not hesitate to use the chat box and we will have at the end a question and answer session. So during this webinar with Nicola, we will be glad to share with you our knowledge and experiences on R4 detection devices and technology. What is this? How does this work? And all latest technology using machine learning. After this webinar, I hope that you will get your useful information and necessary understanding about R4 detection technology. You will get to know a device which can help to increase the safety of your electrical system to better prevent fire risk for your installations as well as your clients' installations by increasing the organizational benefits. Now you are seeing uh, on the screen the table of contents. We're gonna start with the prevention of electrical fire risk. Then we will we're gonna show you why we do need AFDDs, R4 detection devices. We will explore how does this work, R4 detection under the hood. Then it will be very exciting to talk about R4 detection technology, the changing research and development using machine learning. Last but not least, at the end, a Q&A session. Electrical fire risks. As you may know, every year, a lot of number of fire happens and cause a lot of damage for people and goods. But do you know how many of them have an electrical root cause? Please, let's start with a very quick, simple, easy quiz. Number one, according to you, what is the number of fires reported every year in Europe? 200,000 or 2 million. How many of them in percentage have an electrical origin? Above 50% or below 50%? Please note your answer. You have 10 seconds. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. A 
Okay, right answer is 2 million. 2 million fires are reported in Europe each year. A fire every three minutes. 90% of fires in the EU happen in buildings on average. 136 billion euros is lost by fire damage each year. It's equivalent to 1% of EU GDP. And 4,000 people are killed by fire every year. 11 deaths per day. Now we're going to see some facts and figures about electrical fire. In Europe, estimated from 20 to 30% 30 of all domestic fires have an, an electrical root cause. According to the countries and according to the means of identification as well as the reporting, this number in France is 25% according to ONSI, in Germany 33% according to IFS, and in England 53% according to ESF. 1,000 people are killed by electrical-induced fires each year. And 6.2 billion is the cause of damage caused by electrical fire. So after facts and figures of fire in Europe and electrical fire, now we're going to see some examples of fire around the world ignited by electrical fault. We are in Germany from where he's writing Sai Library, Anna Maria. The fire happened in September 2004 during a night, caused 60 million euros of damage and burnt 50,000 historical books. According to authority, the fire was ignited by an electrical fault. Coming to France, a lovely 18th century historic castle, Chateau de Lunéville, the fire in 2003 made a big damage of 100 million euros and the fire was ignited, ignited by electrical fault. Now in Scotland, we can see a fishing vessel get fired during a sleep. Electrical socket fire caused fire on both the fishing vessel alongside in Port Henry Barsin in August 2016. The fire was ignited by electrical fault. And many more examples around us. Uh, we can see in a bar, restaurant, in a commercial building, shopping center, in our homes. And a question can come to our mind. It's how we can avoid it. How we can minimize the electrical fire risks, which cause a lot of bad and sad consequences. So in the next slide, I will talk with you about why we do not AFGD, our fault detection devices. As you may know, we have already several measures to limit the consequences of fire, such as detection methods, smoke detectors, fire alarms, sprinkler systems, fire extinguishers to extinguish the fire to stop or capture or block fire with fire doors or fire resistant walls. A procedure in case of fire, emergency lighting, plan escape routes and refuse ports. But it's more interesting and better to prevent fire from occurring. Based on the behaviors of occupants, based on law, forbid the smoking example, uh, we can make building periodic inspections or preventive maintenance. But it's one big important point is to prevent electrical fire risk. If we want to avoid a big part, a number of fire and awful detection devices are created in order to minimize and better prevent the fire risk. And especially against arcing forks that I will, I'm going to explain to you in the next slide. Type of electrical fire risk. In the right of screen, you are seeing an electrical circuit of a vacuum load. The lie natural protective earth conductor, protected by protection means. 
Elliptical files can be crossed by a number of mount functions, short circuits and overloads, protected by MCBs, miniature circuit breakers. Liquid current, protected by RCD, residual current devices. Lining, protected by SPD, sub protection devices. Overvoltage, protected by POP, power frequency, overvoltage protections. And dangerous electrical arcs are protected by AFDDs. AFDD are the definition of standard IEC 62606. R4 detection device is a device intended to mitigate the effects of arcing faults by disconnecting the circuit when an R4 is detected. You can see in the number five, the arc faults in the electrical circuit. And why electrical arcs appear? Electrical arcs can be caused by many factors. King break in the cable, cable wear due to frequent use. When we make construction work, light damage can be resulted from drilling, or we have incorrect or bad wire stripping or bending ready, or when we lose screw connections, have defective work blocks after time, or bad golden bites. We have two types of arc fault, parallel arc fault and series arc fault. Parallel arc fault is where the occurrence is flowing between different conductors, line nature or line earth, and in parallel with the load of the circuit. Series arc fault is where the current is flowing through the load of the final circuit. In case of series arc fault, you can see that the electrical arc happens between two different parts of a conductor and the current going through the load. According to IEC, the current value is from 2.5 amps to the nominal rating current, but not exceeds 63 amps. In this case, the current value is limited by the impedance of arc and the impedance of load. And it can only happen when the load is connected for the series arc fault. Parallel arc fault have uh, two types, the parallel arc fault line neutral or parallel arc fault line earth. According to IEC, the accurate value in the case of line neutral is 75 amps to 500 amps. And in case of earth R4, the value is from 5 amps to 75 amps. The parallel R4 is limited by the insulation impedance. So now please take a look at the R4 phenomena. In a electrical circuit, a vacuum load protected by an AFDD. An example series arc fault happened. It occurs an arc voltage across the terminals of arc fault locations, and an arc current flows through the AFDD and captured detected by AFDD. The AFDD arc fault detection device uses the microprocessors in order to identify the characteristic currents and voltage curves that indicate an arc fault and automatically chip the affected circuit. Now we're gonna see closer look about the signal of an arc. About our voltage, we have different phases. When the voltage of the system increase to the sufficient uh, threshold, the arc strikes and then are passed to the arc conducts. When the voltage of the system decreases, arc quenches, and we will have a period of no arcing when the voltage of system across zero. The arc current have a specific waveform called shoulder waveform. You can see here. 
and R voltage is the signal of full frequencies from 50 Hertz fundamental to kilohertz and megahertz. And the AFDD uses these specific parameters in order to identify if it's an R fault and chip the circuit. In the next slides, uh, further, my colleague Nicola will go deeper in the technology and explain to you more about how does it work. Now I'm going to talk about the protection functions. In the screen, you can see the different type of electrical faults, serial faults, leakage, overload, short circuits, in case of normal short circuit, you, you already know, or sporadic arcs, equivalent to parallel arc faults, and over voltage. As you may know, MCB protection function protects against overload and short circuits. RCD protect, protects leakage and source circuit in case of phase ground. The R4 protection function protects against serial fault, parallel R4, and include at where the over voltage uh, in the case of Hager's uh, AFDDs. So you can imagine that if we combine the R4 protection, RCD protection, MCB protections, we will have a complete protections against all nerve different types of the electrical faults prescribed here. And integrating R4 protections will maximize and enhance the protection against fault and better prevent the electrical fire risk for your system. Now, it's very good to hear about AFDD, but where it's come from and when it was created. History of our food protections. The history began during 20th century in the United States. There was a lot, a lot of number of fires and there was a lot of bad and sad consequences, damage for people and goods. So the authorities made a lot of investigation in order, and in order to identify, identify and understand where it comes from and how to minimize all of, of a fire. And uh, recent research uh, lately, uh, end of 20th century, show that the electrical fire risk is a big number of fire and we can avoid by creating an R4 detection device called AFCI are for circuit interrupters in US in order to better prevent the electrical fire risk. And they discovered that the electrical fire risk can be caused by arcing force when they look during the night, the small arcs, um, the luminous arcs in the socket. So at the first time in 1996, they published the first draft of UN 1699 about AFCI. Three years later, NEC standard introduced brand feeder AFCI and mandatory from 2002. From 2002 to 2008, there was a lot of evolution from brand feeder AFCI to combination type AFCI, from uh, bedroom uh, receptacles to the on the circuits of family. And until uh, today, in 2014, uh, they include all the different type of protection, R4, uh, cellular R4, parallel R4, and ground R4 in one device. And how about IEC work? IEC decided to initiate the standardization work on AFDD in 2008. And three years later, uh, five years later, sorry, 2013, the first version of IEC standard on R4 detection devices are published, the 62606. One year later, the voltage, low voltage installation standard IEC 364-4.42 recommended AFDDs on some installations. And since 2016, Hager introduced to market different offer and a lot of evolution since uh, 2016 to now. Uh, we already offer to 
different countries in Europe, example, Germany, UK, etc. Now, please take a look at installation standard. The clause 421.7 recommended that special measures is taken to protect against the effects of our faults in final circuits, in sleeping area or accommodations, example, bedrooms or hotels, location with risk of fire due to the nature of process stored materials, example of woodworking shops, location with compatible construction materials, example wooden buildings, a fire propagating structures, example high-rise buildings, any locations with enduring or irreplaceable goods, example museum or library. As is recommended in standards, you can decide to equip full AFDDs in com your complete circuits, as well as you can personalize and select the different final circuits to protect. Here is an example. In the screen, you can see that you can use an MCB combined AFD functions in order to protect light, lights. Uh, RCBO combined AFD in order to protect bedrooms, bedroom one, bedroom two, and ACBO combined AFD to protect kitchen. The other circuits you can protect with RCBO or an MCB plus an RCCB in that stream. Now discover our hardware offer. We have a complete range with AFDD combined MCB, two modules, and AFDD combined RCBO. It's complying to IEC and EN62606 plus local norms in Germany, UK, etc. Uh, the breaking capacity is up to 10 kA, varial chipping characteristic B and C curve, current rating up to 40 amps. Uh, we have our food in the indicator, icon to ease identifications, test button for safety, quick bus bar, quick connect, bottom remove abilities to ease the configuration and installations, front product libraries for a friendly user interface, a QR code in order to have all necessary information on products. Our AFDDs are already installed in several countries in Europe. Let's discover more on our website, hager.com, or contact your Hager sales representative. Now, I propose to take a break. It's the cinema time. Are you ready? That is a bench test of uh, Hager. So we are preparing the aging process to create dangerous electrical arc with the cables. Now we will try with the circuit protected by AFDD. Insertion of the 40 cable. You can see the uh, AFDD chip, it chips, so no fire. You can see some smoke, but no fire. And now circuit protected by RCBO. So we can see a fire here, and the RCBO didn't chip. So we are going to the half of presentations and I will give the floor now to my colleague, Nicola. Please, Nicola. Thank you, Duke. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I, Im I imagine uh, that your curiosity has been awakened and that you would like to know uh, more how does it work. 
So let's go and have a look under the hood of this technology. I just have to switch back to the presentation and we can start. The first things to the first thing to know is that an IFDD is not just an arc fault detector. It has also conventional overload and short circuit protection. You can see here uh, on the left side the MCB parts of the IFDD. Sometimes it has also residual, residual current protection. You will see it later. So this fir first kind of product is the MCB IFD. As you can see from an outside point of view, uh, the external look is very similar to existing product. But look at the flame just located um, here. I can make a small circle. There is a flame, and uh, this is how we can identify arc fault detection, detection devices. Above the flame and below the flame, you have also two important elements. I will come back to it later. So on the left side, MCB part, you can see uh, conventional uh, elements, the handle, the contact, the arc chamber, the magnetic coil, uh, also the bimetal, and the terminals. On the right side, here you have the IFD part. On, on this part, you can see that we have two cores here for current measurement. You have several electronic components, of course. We have an actuator here in order to trip the, the product. And we have, of course, also a microcontroller, which is located behind this plastic part here. You cannot see it on this picture, but uh, it's located right behind this, this part. So now, let's see what kind of, uh, of protection do we have with this uh, product. Uh, first, on the left side, of course, uh, you have the bimetal, which will bend itself to trip the product. Uh, according to the temperature rise created by the current flow. Then you have the magnetic coil, uh, which will create a magnetic field uh, to move the actuator that will trip the product in case of short circuits. So this is conventional electromechanical protection. On the right side, you have the current core, which will uh, allow to measure with high precision the signal produced by the current flowing in the protected circuit in order to look for specific patterns that match with series and parallel arc folds. We have also a ground fold core, which allow to measure the difference between outgoing and incoming current. If the difference is not equal to zero, the product will assume there is a wiring error in the installation, which could lead to dangerous situation. We call it neutral crossing. This is an additional feature uh, that is offered with MCB IFD as they don't have residual current protection, but this is not a residual current protection. And finally, we have the voltage measurement, which will allow the over voltage protection, starting at 275 volts. Uh, and the higher the voltage will be, the fastest the product will trip. So these force protections are handled by the microcontroller, which means, of course, that these are digital protections. Uh, we have seen the MCB IFD, but there is also another product, as Duke already said before, uh, which is even more protective. It, it is the RCBO plus IFD. On the left side, we'll find the same two elements as before in order to protect overload and short circuit. And you will also have, uh, in addition, a residual current core and an electromechanical relay used for residual current protection, protecting people against electrical shocks. On the right side, you will find almost the same elements as before. The only difference is that here we didn't need to implement a ground fault core on the IFDD side because wiring errors will be detected by the RCD protection on the left side. Okay, so now that you have seen the main component inside the products, you will probably still wonder, OK, but how does it work? Actually, five characteristics are constantly monitored by the product. The first is the RMS value of the current. If it is higher than 2.5 amps, 
it will allow the protection to, to trip. The duration of the arc also is very important. The irregularity of the arc is something which is also important. I will explain it later uh, a little uh, bit more. High frequencies disturbances are, are also important. And finally, specific arc waveforms. So it means that these five characteristics have to be true all together at the same time in order to trigger arc fault protection. The first two characteristics are coming from the standard, the IEC 62606. Um, first, Hermes value, where does it come from? Scientific studies have demonstrated the very low probability to start a fire uh, with arc fault below 2.5 amps. So that's why the, the standard uh, say, okay, the protection has to start uh, at 2.5 amps. About the duration of the arc, also, other studies have demonstrated uh, that the maximal energy of the arc shall be limited to 100 joules. Therefore, the maximal duration of the arc is computed according to this value. In practice, uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that the more current you have, the faster the IFDD will trip. So you can see here you have the table one from the standard. And the, the maximal tripping time is one second, is the lowest value, and up to the maximal rated current uh, allowed by the standard, which is 63 amp. And here you have uh, 0 0.12 second. Uh, these three other characteristics are not coming from the product standard, but uh, they have been chosen by Agar as a result of scientific studies and also experiments. First, the irregularity of the arc. This is typical of an arc fault because the arc is generated uh, in uncontrolled environment and it will burn surrounding materials and modify itself every half cycles. Uh, this characteristic will be analyzed using correlation, which is a very good indicator of the randomness of the signal. And then you have high frequencies disturbances. Uh, this is also a very good characteristic of arc fault especially when arc is burning through insulating materials. These frequencies will be extracted from the signal using analog bandpass filters. So as you can see on the diagram here, uh, uh, we are extracting uh, several things from the, the current core uh, frequency and also an image of the, the signal itself of the current and also an image of the voltage. All of these three information are coming inside the microcontroller and the, uh, the output of the microcontroller is the, the actuator, the command of the actuator that will trip the product. And then, um, finally, specific arc waveforms are also monitored, um, like the current extension around the voltage zero crossing. It is also a very good indicator of the presence of an arc fault. So these five characteristics when they are all true together at the same time, these are the minimal requirements for arc fault detection. The actual embedded algorithm is a little bit more complex, but this gives, let's say, the, the most, uh, the very good idea of how does it work. This is the most important points. Okay, so I, I think uh, that you have understood that IFDDs are performing a lot of computation in real time. This is also important. All of this computation has to be performed in real time. Let's have a deeper look at it. Uh, every 10 milliseconds, which is called an half cycle, the data is flowing through the following steps. So the electrical values are converted into electronic signals. Then they are uh, measured by the microcontroller in order to have the ADC value. So here we start to come inside the microcontroller. The microcontroller will perform digital computing and will produce something we call secondary parameters. For example, correlation or RMS values is a secondary parameter. Uh, there is a lot of secondary parameters and all of these parameters are coming in a decision algorithm. And the output of this decision is the trip command of the electromechanic actuator. This 
means also that a decision is made every 10 milliseconds. The product has to choose if it will trip or not, if it detects an arc fault or not. Here is an example on the graphic below of signals. On the first plot, you have ADC values. For example, you can see uh, what a an arc fault uh, current looks like. Uh, you have the very characteristic, uh, some kind of shoulders. It's not sinusoidal as it should be because here we are on a resistive load. And you can also see some frequencies on the signals just below. And on the second and the third plot, uh, you have an example of secondary parameters that are computed, for example, correlation uh, computed also with uh, digital filtering. Uh, actually, we have more than 350 secondary parameters which are computed every half cycle. Okay, now let's see how you can test and diagnose IFDDs. Below the flame, you have a test button, which is a manual test button. Uh, we recommend to test it at initial setup of the IFDD uh, in order to ensure that the IFDD is correctly installed in its environment. Also, electronic part will be tested, and the result is the tripping of the product and you have the yellow indicator here above the flame that will indicate that this is the IFD part that has tripped. Then, uh, as a second uh, test, uh, the microcontroller actually is performing self tests continuously during all the service life. Uh, for example, uh, we have some uh, tests we, that will check memory integrity, uh, CPU errors. We will also check that internal voltage are okay, the software activities also. Uh, and then, uh, you, you will, uh, how can you know what kind of fault uh, caused the tripping of the product? Uh, it's important to have a look at the yellow indicator. For example, here on, the, on this, on this uh, two first uh, drawing here, as you can see there is no yellow indicator. This means the product has tripped due to a short circuit or an overload. If you have on the RCB OFD, if you have only the indicator linked to the RCD part, it means this is the residual current device that has tripped. So the cause is the residual current. And finally, if you have the yellow indicator above the flame, it means this is an arc for tripping. For the RCB OFD, you will have both indicators, but this mean, it means it is an IFD uh, tripping. Huh? It, it does not mean means it is a, an RCD trip. Okay, so now that uh, you are all experts in arc fault detection, I propose you to have a look behind the scenes to give you an overview uh, of how do we develop IFDDs. A legitimate question uh, that has been that have been raised uh, at the beginning of the introduction of this new technology is are IFDDs proven? It's good to know that the development of IFDDs is the result of thousands of test hours. First, we test, of course, the MCB part of the product. Uh, it includes overload test, uh, short circuit test, endurance test, temperature test, the electric strength test, and a lot of other tests. And all of these tests are uh, included in the standard IEC 6898-1. Uh, and then you have the RCB OFD. Uh, you have additional tests uh, linked to residual current, uh, like tripping levels and tripping, tripping times, but all of this linked to the residual current tests. And finally, uh, you have the test dedicated to IFDD. You have series arc fault test uh, to check the robustness of the series arc fault uh, detection in various situations. For example, you have a various loads combination to be tested. You have a different uh, line lengths to be tested also. 
Uh, cross tool test to check that the IFDD uh, detects faults only in its protected circuit. Test with EMI filters, uh, electromagnetic interference filters, because there are a lot of them in, in several appliances. You have to be sure that the detection is working correctly if this kind of, of filters are, are in the circuits. And temperature test also. Uh, we put the IFDDs at very low and very high temperatures ambient temperatures and we check that everything is okay. We have parallel arc fault test of course to check the parallel arc fault between phase and neutral and phase to earth. And EMC test also is a, is a very uh, important thing because we have a, a lot of electronics inside the product. So we test conducted and radiated disturbances, conducted and radiated emissions, surge, burst, electrostatic discharge and so on. And in addition to all of Uh, to all of these validation tests, we certify your product with third-party certification bodies like VDE, for example, in Germany. So we have seen that the validation process is very strong, but the question is, how can we achieve the required level of protection while being sure not to have unwanted tripping as well? So in addition to theoretical consideration, Experimentations and data gathering is the key. Um, we did, with dedicated development tools, we are able to collect data from the microcontroller, especially the IDC values. And these recordings, we call them traces. Uh, we have built a database of over half a million recordings. Uh, of course, uh, It is not that, that this uh, data recording is only possible in laboratory tests, field tests, and sometimes uh, with customers in technical support process with their agreements. So uh, we have no possibility to get data from the product once it is installed in its final destination. No? There is no wired or wireless connection. So in this way, of course, data privacy is of course fully respected. And we have developed uh, software tools to simulate the behavior of the microcontroller on computers. And we, so we can test the algorithm in simulation. So this is a very powerful way to, to test and to improve the, the algorithm. And when simulations are okay, we can update the firmware to the microcontroller, back in the microcontroller, and then we will start the real life validation test that I've told uh, before. Okay, and uh, now when we talk about decision algorithm and big data processing, comes the question of machine learning as obvious. But what is machine learning? Human defined rules are very efficient, but they can take, take significant time to be developed. Uh, and sometimes they can become very complex and hard to update, especially when they use big data. And over the past few years, the rise of the machine learning has become obvious uh, for a lot of application handling big data. Artificial neural networks uh, are the most popular tools used in machine learning. So the idea here uh, is to have the same input and output. So the, the input are the secondary parameters, and the output is the decision to trip or not to trip. But the internal processing will be different, uh, and with, with artificial neural network, it will be performed by virtual neurons, uh, each one having their own coefficient. The definition of this coefficient uh, is done automatically in the learning step, uh, and it is called a supervised learning, And supervised learning is a way of building neural networks uh, by telling to the network which data belong to which classification, unlike unsupervised learning, uh, in which the network will create uh, its own classification. So ANN, artificial neural networks, uh, applied to AFDD, are very promising. Uh, we are performing research at Hager to use them. Uh, the main expected benefits are uh, to handle big data, to find the best possible rules, and it will be also easier to update. 
But uh, availability and quality of the data is very important to perform a good learning. And uh, we have to be uh, careful of the embedded platform because implementation of neural networks in microcontroller is not as easy as in computers. And in addition, uh, there is the real-time computation, uh, which is also important to be sure that everything is fine with this. OK, so thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And now it's time for the questions. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to, to type them in the chat box. Oh, we have a first question. How IDD can differentiate ARC and SURGE? Uh, I think I will answer this, Duke. Yeah, you um, can't. <laughs> uh, these are very different uh, phenomena. A surge uh, is, a, is at the beginning is a, is a link to the voltage. It can also be a surge uh, of current, um, but it's very short in time. A surge is a, is a very uh, short phenomenon uh, where an arc fault is, a, is something that will last for a, a few half cycles. So. Uh, the algorithm is able to, to, to take, detect the difference between uh, both phenomena. Yeah, to, to complete a little bit, uh, Nicolas, thank you for your explanations. Uh, the search actually, uh, as you explained, it's very short and um, it's transient, um, like over voltage or over current. And the ARC voltage are serial fault or parallel are fault here for AFDD is typically the specific waveform, repetitive and um, but irregularly, like uh, Nicola explained it, and it's combined of all the different characteristics. So, example different as well to the search or to the short circuit. It the arc happen not only half cycle. It's only a part of half cycle, but it repeated. It's not a completed breakdown, but it's. Uh, breakdown and then the installation take back and then it's repeated again. So it's quite specific uh, serial arc fault and parallel arc fault. Uh, I, I can answer this mm -hmm. uh, question, Nicola. Yes. Why not combine all electrical protections to one device like RCD plus MCD RCDO? Um, yes, actually, uh, we have, uh, as uh, I explained it in the presentation, that we integrate the R4 detection functions in our devices. We have MCB combined with AFD, so you have uh, not the RCD, but we will complete with the RCD. We have, as well, as the question mentions, RCD plus MCB plus AFD, and then we have uh, RCBO combined with our four detections. So today in Hager offers, we have both MCB plus IFD only, but we have as well RCD plus MCB plus IFD. So equivalent to RCBO combined IFDD. What is the difference between short circuit fault and arc fault? Um, maybe I can answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, a short circuit uh, is, a, is a contact, is a direct contact uh, between two live parts. And um, most of the time, uh, the current is uh, really higher uh, than parallel arc faults. Because I think, I imagine the question is uh, more about parallel arc fault. So parallel arc faults, uh, they are not short circuits. It's not a, a direct contact. Uh, it's more like a sporadic arcs that will repeat repeat themselves uh, in uh, several half cycles. Uh, so it's not, uh, it's, lo it's longer than short circuit because short circuit, short circuit uh, is a much, uh, much, much short in time, but with higher value of current. So it's not exactly the same phenomenon, um, but it's true that if you have an arc fault, a parallel arc fault, which is uh, close to the to a contact, a real contact, uh, it can then 
transform itself in short circuits. It's, it is possible depending on the on the configuration of the, the fault. Does earth loop impedance matter in arc fault? Um, maybe I can also answer, uh, but if you want to add something, Duke, uh, you can. Yeah, uh, um, it can have uh, its importance in parallel arc faults uh, phase to earth, because in this situation, the current will be limited by the impedance of the earth loop, but Normally, in other situations like parallel arc faults between phase and neutrals or series arc faults, uh, the, the earth loop impedance should not uh, influence the, the arc fault. So to, to add a very important things, it's uh, AFDD um, designed it in order to um, detect one of the specific characteristic of an arc fault um, and not, let's say, independent to the loop impedance uh, of Earth, uh, and actually, um, as I Nicola explained, that um, it can uh, have some impedance, uh, can change the value of uh, characteristic. But if the characteristic identify dangerous electrical arcs for uh, the um, systems and can cause fire, described in the standard, so AFDD will chip with uh, its microprocessors. So there. Is, no influence uh, at all on this. Will AFDD detect both upstream and downstream arcs? This is a very good question. <laughs> uh, actually, the products are designed to detect downstream arcs. Um, but I imagine the question is related to series arc fault. Huh? Uh, but let, let's talk about also parallel arc fault. Uh, but first, series arc fault. Uh, it is possible that if you have a, an upstream series arc fault, uh, it could be detected uh, by the FDD. But it's unlikely because the the product uh, is uh, is really uh, de developed to detect uh, downstream arc. Um, and um, and if you are talking about parallel arc faults. Uh, this is different because parallel arc fault, uh, the product cannot detect. It's impossible to detect uh, upstream parallel arc fault because the, the current of the fault, uh, if the fault is upstream, it will not go through the FDD. So for parallel arc faults, uh, it is, uh, there is, there are, it's only possible to detect them if it's downstream. Duke? Um, okay, so you I, want I will take this question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any instant base in Gulf countries? Um, yes, actually, um, today we already saw a lot of uh, our offers in um, Europe, mostly Germany, UK, uh, Sweden, Poland, etc. Because uh, there is a, a strong recommendations or even some semi mandatory. Uh, in the standards, um, and uh, we have a lot of requests, and we already have a big install base in Europe. Concerning Gulf countries, uh, we make as well our launching, and uh, we propose uh, our offer in Gulf countries, and um, we are working on some projects, but um, uh, maybe not yet install base. So we count on you in the future to understand um, the importance of uh, prevention of electrical fire risk, uh, get arcing foot of these uh, AFDDs. And uh, if you're interested, contact our sales representative and um, we can make a quotation or support you uh, by our application engineer. Thank you. Is there any chance for nuisance stripping? If yes, how would how it would be addressed? This is also a good question. <laughs> uh, as I explained before, um, it, the challenge is to build a strong al algorithm, a robust algorithm. Uh, and of course, it's not easy. Uh, that's why uh, one way to do this is to, uh, to test in a lot of different situations. And we have performed 
uh, hundreds and thousands of tests in different situations um, in laboratory, but also in field tests. Um, it's, it's true that with, uh, in laboratory tests or in field tests at the beginning, we, we detected some uh, situation with nuisance strippings. Uh, but we, we were then able to, to fix these uh, issues uh, by updating the algorithm. And, uh, and now uh, we can never say there is absolutely no chance for nuisance stripping. Uh, of course, maybe it's possible to, to, have, uh, to have some situation, very specific situation. Uh, but uh, now we are, as Duke has already said, we have a strong uh, base installed uh, in Europe. Uh, and we have uh, and we have good feedbacks about uh, about it in, in Germany or in UK, for example. Uh, so uh, we are very confident uh, about uh, about this. So uh, to add an important point for this question is, as you say, interesting questions. Um, at our experience today in Hager offers, we are confident and almost uh, no news on chipping. Uh, as experience we earned. Uh, but of course, when we start to have a new installations, we have a customer services um, uh, service can uh, can support and help. But it's very rare. It's very very rare. The the device very very um, reliable. If you can give an example, uh, for for example, at the, the beginning, uh, some people were thinking they have a nuisance stripping. Uh, for example, someone uh, called us and say, uh, every time I, I, uh, I use my dimmer with the light, and every time I increase the power of the light, uh, the product uh, tripped. It's a nuisance stripping. Uh, but after our investigation, uh, we found out that it was a neutral crossing issue. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, this kind of issue uh, at the beginning uh, of IFDD. So it, it was, at the end, it was a problem with the installation and not uh, with the product. So. Uh, it's also when you introduce a new kind of protection, a new kind of technology, uh, it, uh, it takes also a little bit time for the, the people to, to understand how it works and to be sure uh, that it's uh, at the end uh, where is the problem. And most of the time it's in, this, in the installation. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. What is the working top aperture range for this IFDD? Uh, uh, I'm sure it begins at uh, minus five degrees and up to forty degrees, uh, but I'm uh, not sure. Uh, yeah, you, you, you are. I agree. I agree. Answer this. Um, what is the working temperature range for this AFDD? Uh, actually, we uh, have tested uh, from minus twenty degree up to sixty degree in terms of working temperature. Mm -hmm. So it's quite high to, in, in different environment. Uh, our device can be. Um, uh, tested, approved for, and uh, one important important point: it's designed, it, uh, tested, checked, it, and approved it in Hager, uh, France. What happens if a surge strike on the microprocessor in AFDD? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> uh, it depends. Uh, it depends uh, on what kind of failure we, we can have in the FDD. Um, but there is also a lot of electronic protection inside the product. Huh? So uh, the electronic is protected uh, with a, a lot of electronic components. And we test the product uh, with surge huh? in laboratories. They are tested uh, uh, up to uh, 4 kilovolts and, and even more to be sure that uh, the, the product will not uh, have any damage uh, linked to this kind of, of uh, surges. Uh, but uh, as I also explained uh, before, uh, there, was, there, there are self-tests inside the, the product. And uh, for example, if the memory is corrupted, uh, the microcontroller will be able to, to detect it and it will trip the product as a safety. Uh, if any problem is detected, the product will trip. I hope this answers the, the question. In case of dusty environment, is there is there any problem related to tripping mechanism? Um, 
at Duke, I don't know if you want to answer, but maybe I can give a first answer. Uh, there are some tests uh, in laboratory. We perform a test with uh, dust uh, in order to be to be sure that we don't have any any problem related to to dust. Uh, and these tests are, are very um, are very severe uh, because uh, most of the time uh, in uh, in buildings when buildings are, are, are um, Uh, being built, uh, there are a lot of dust uh, with the, the work. Uh, so that's why we test, we, we perform a lot of tests with dust in order to be to be sure. And this is not only related to FDD, but also uh, with MCBs and RCBOs. Yeah, actually, uh, as you said, Nicola, we have uh, uh, tested um, our device with the protection index IP. Uh, Two X. We have uh, as well the test with uh, humidity environment, high humidity environments, so, and of course uh, we work on different environment to test. So if you interested uh, to any applications, send out some um, uh, request for support or quotations. Uh, we will advise you depending on each case, uh, each case of applications. Hi, this is uh, Thomas speaking, your host for this webinar. I'd just like to mention to all of you that we are already over the time that was allocated for this meeting. But since we still have a lot of questions, um, I would suggest we continue addressing the few. Uh, we still have four or five questions. Um, but uh, just wanted to mention that uh, we are already uh, above one hour. Uh, so you don't miss your next appointments uh, the, uh, in case you had something planned after. So please, uh, let's, let's, go, let's go on, uh, Duke and Nicolas. Yeah, okay, 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 no problem, Thomas, for me. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> of course, uh, it's a pleasure. So it, it's also show it is a very interesting topic, I did this. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, thanks for your attention. So I'm seeing the question on the screen. If this can be used in outdoor panels. Okay. So as I answered in the last question that uh, our uh, devices are tested, approved for the different um, protection index, different working temperature at high temperature, a uh, lower temperature as well. And we have as well the uh, high humidity environment tested, so different type of check, not even on AFDD functions, but already for MCBs and RCBOs. So um, depending on um, the application of the outdoor panels or your applications, uh, it can be answered specifically by our application engineers. What is the IP rating for MCB? So we are talking about IP protection index uh, 2X. So I get some um, uh, different uh, hazardous, um, small uh, dust uh, in, 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 the, in the MCBs. Either uh, AFDD protection along with one prone RCBO. Do you want to answer Nicola or I will take it and then. Uh... I, just to be sure I understand, uh, is there an AFDD protection along with one pole RCBO? So I think the question is uh, do we have in our offer uh, an, I, an RCBO AFDD in one pole? Um, no. For the moment, uh, we don't have this kind uh, of, uh, of products. The, the two products we have, uh, we have presented uh, we have present them uh, before. So we have uh, two models for MCB IFD and uh, three models for uh, RCBO plus IFD. But it okay. is also because um, uh, these products um, uh, were developed uh, for specific uh, needs and um, I, I imagine that uh, other form factor will be developed uh, in the future uh, for other uh, needs or other markets. Okay. 
how's the FDD in GCC market? So the Gulf countries market, I think in UAE, electrical local code, there is no any requirements for the IFDD. Yes, so this question is concerning uh, standard obligations. Um, at, uh, I know as well that today, uh, there is no mandatory um, clause in any standards in the uh, in, uh, Middle East for, for the, this type of IFDD, but um, as IEC standards, International Electrotechnical Electro Commission's standard uh, recommend strongly. Uh, so I think that um, maybe we, 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 we will follow um, up the, the evolution in the future for the Middle East zone. Uh, but yes, the answer here is uh, not yet mandatory or even maybe not uh, specified. Can we use MCB IFDD or RCB IFDD as main circuit? Um, I imagine this is uh, the question is uh, uh, can we use them um, uh, upstream of other uh, to protect several circuits maybe? Um, so the, the, the answer is no. Uh, you cannot, uh, and it's also uh, it is also in the standard. The product standard uh, and the installation standard, it is required to use uh, an IFDD protection for each circuit um, in order to uh, to to take the, to have the the, the best possible uh, um, environment for the IFDD to to be able to to work in perfect conditions um, and uh, and uh, this is how the products are, are designed for the moment. So it's not possible to, to use them uh, to protect several circuits. After the different research and um, studies, uh, standard recommended today to protect specifically uh, the final circuit. Mm, exactly, yeah. the final circuit. Mm. So our products are developed according to standard. Mm. Luc, you want to answer this? what is the maximum current rating possible? Yes, um, very good questions. So um, according to different applications and according to the studies of um, the IEC uh, committee, uh, the most of uh, user, it's um, from 50 arm, 20 arms, 25 arms, uh, final circuits. Uh, so it's a general, most general use in the world. And the IEC recommended, um, uh, of course, uh, up to 63 amps at the maximum. Um, and in our panel of products, uh, we go up to 40 amps um, for the most of the neural case. So with 40 amps, it's most of the circuit are protected. What is the maximum braking capacity? 10 or 15 k? I think it's 10. Huh? Um, we are up to 10 kilo amps. Yes, uh, 50 kilo amps. I'm not sure because maybe we have a margin in our products. I do not know exactly. But um, in the standard, uh, we have a 10 k uh, approved and tested. Hello, Nicola, is the machine learning region country specific? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, as I explained before, we are working on it. So for the moment, uh, it is not implemented in uh, existing product, uh, but we are working on it uh, very actively. And uh, if we decide to, 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 to use it, uh, I, I there is no reason that it will be uh, specific to one uh, country or, or one region. What are the rules of the design of home switch panel with the FDD? Mm, I'm not sure I understand exactly the question. Duc, do you, do you... Uh, understand where the question is? Uh, do we have a guide for um... The, the the home switch panel design. Uh, I okay. think we have several guys in um, different um, 
organization, I see maybe Lovontip installation standard can help. Or maybe um, if you have any uh, questions, you can contact our application engineer center support. I will size the rating of the IFDD. Um, I think it's exactly the same as uh, for MCB. Uh, it's, there is no, no reason to, to do it uh, in another way than uh, the way you, you are doing it for standard MCBs. If, for example, a circuit today is protected, protected with a 16 amps MCB, then you can replace the MCB with a 16 amps IFDD. What is the protection class for the embedded residual current protection, class A or AC? Um, I think we have the we have both in in our offer. Uh, actually, we, we 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 are talking about type A or type AC. Uh, we have both uh, for the RCB OFD. What is the country of origin manufacturing location for Agar IFDD? Uh, I have uh, I've talked about it uh, at the very beginning. Uh, it's in France. Um, we are developing IFDD and we are manufacturing them also in France. Uh, so that that's also why uh, we are located uh, in France, uh, Duke and myself. Yeah, exactly. So I confirmed that uh, I confirmed that uh, design, uh, tested, uh, check, approved, and produced in France. In general, what could be the percentage of fire outbreak cases causing by arc fault compared to short circuit fault? Uh, I can take these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, so that it's. Um, Let's say that it depends on the different uh, country, different uh, uh, methods of uh, analysis and statistics. However, to give you an idea, uh, for example, in US, uh, the authorities estimate that uh, 40 up to 50% of electrical fault are caused by um, arcing faults. It means serial arc fault or parallel arc fault. So it's a quite uh, high numbers in electrical fault. But of course, it depending as well on the countries and different uh, installations and different circuits. Uh, de depending on a lot of factors. But to give a rough idea, in US, you have a 40 up to 50% uh, official investigation of the, of the authority. Is there a three phases version as well? Uh, no, not in our yeah. offer. Uh, Nicola, I can, I can, uh, let's say, add a, a small uh, important point. Mm -hmm. It is that uh, the three phase versions um, today it's not uh, in our portfolio of offer. Uh, as well, in the IEC standard, it's not just prescribed, it only uh, um, single phase and to protect final circuits. So no phase version yet, maybe in the future, maybe in the future. Okay. okay. Thank you, Duke. Thank you, Nicolas. It was a quite an intensive uh, Q&A session. Yeah. Interactive, very interesting. Thank very you interesting. both. And oh, thank you to uh, all the attendees who have been uh, asking so many questions and following the webinar until now, until the very final question. I'd just like to thank you all again and to encourage you to take just a, one more minute to let us know how this uh, session was and to help us to improve the next sessions um, by completing the feedback survey. And I would like to invite you also to check our website or our LinkedIn page uh, for Hager Middle East to check the schedule for the next webinars. There will be a very interesting session tomorrow morning uh, with a panel discussion of energy experts about flexibility to the grid. 
I'm sure you will be very interested to follow this session also. Uh, you can check um, our website or the LinkedIn page to register to this next session tomorrow morning. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.